There you go. This is what's called a yom yom. These are messages for every day collected by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. In Chabad, there were seven Rebbe's. The first one is the one who wrote the book called the Tanya. Tanya. <clears throat> and he, there were six Rebbe's that came after him. The last Rebbe is this Rebbe. Here we go. See? Rebbe. Mm, let me see it clearly. That's the seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe. Every Rebbe of Chabad is the Mashiach of his generation. <clears throat> and he gathered up the sayings of the Rebbe before him, who was, who was his father-in-law, who I used to have a picture of, but I don't have it now. But anyway, okay. Here we go. Hearken and hear Yisrael. Listen, Haskes Ushma Yisrael. Where is this? Haskes means be still and listen, Jews. Now is the time of the redemption by the Mashiach. This was said by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe who he passed away, like what, 70 years ago, 72 years ago. So back then he said, we are now in the times of the Mashiach. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, his name was Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, and he was Rebbe for 30 years. The first 30 years was in communist Russia, and he defied the government over there and spread Judaism, and they put him into prison, sentenced to the death, and miraculously he was released. And he went to, then he went to Poland. He was there for 10 years until the war started. And he miraculously escaped World War II. He came to America in 1940. And then he started this whole outreach movement to spread Judaism to non-religious Jews. He started in a big way. And he also sent out emissaries to Morocco and to Tunisia and to different places. <clears throat> to save the Jews over there because they were in the, in the influence of the French and you know, this. And he said that if the Jewish people just return to God, then immediately Mashiach will come. Alter, not that he didn't say Mashiach, he said the redemption will come. The altar, the chuvil, altar, the gula. And Lubavitch Rebbe, his son in law, said many times that the previous Rebbe, he was the Mashiach of his generation. Simply because of his teaching. The main thing Mashiach is supposed to do is teach. The sufferings befalling us, all the sufferings that we have, are the birth pangs of Mashiach. <clears throat> Holocaust. <clears throat> Israel will be redeemed. One second. The Jewish people will, re will redeem, gathered together, only by returning to God. Returning to God means a lot of things, but one thing returning to God means just returning to God what we owe him. He's creating us, he's giving us everything. We just return to us a little bit, right? Return, return our attention to God. Have no faith in the false prophets who assure you of glories and salvation after the war. Here he's talking about Zionism, especially. <clears throat> Remember the word of God. Curses is the man who puts his trust in man, who places his reliance for help in humans, and turns his heart from God. This is Jeremiah. And there was nothing good is really going to come from leaving God and uh, thinking you can do everything naturally. It, temporarily it works, but not for long. Return Israel. Now the Rebbe is not trying to curse anybody, but he's he just brings the word of Jeremiah. A ruler, a giver. And there was, he's saying nothing good is going to come out of leaving God. Return Israel to your eternal God. Prepare yourselves and your family to receive Mashiach, whose coming is any second now. Any second, immediately. So you see these pains and the troubles and the tribulations that are occurring to the Jews. Someone once wrote to, wrote to the Lubavitcher Rebbe and said that he was a Holocaust survivor. And he said that after he went, what he went through, he can't believe in God. How it doesn't understand how anybody can believe in God. So the Rebbe said, <clears throat> wrote back to him that your question is, of course, a very good one. And you know it's very justified, but you have to understand that for some weird reason that the Jewish people have suffered such things, uh, the ter terrible tragedies and uh, the catastrophes over and over again. And he said that the destruction of the first temple and the second temple in many ways was much worse than the Holocaust. It could be that a greater percentage of the Jews were killed, but also in the Holocaust, not all the Jews were affected. The Jews that were in America, and the Jews that were in Canada and South America, right? They weren't affected at all by the exile, unless they had relatives or something. 
<clears throat> so they weren't affected, which is not the case. The destruction of the first and second temple, everyone was affected, all the Jews, especially the first temple, so that there were rivers of blood that were so strong that a horse couldn't stand up. So rivers of blood. And we, we got over those things. We got over them. And <clears throat> because the Jew, the power of Jewish power, the Jewish soul is somehow infinite. Why God does these things to us, only God will explain. The Mashiach will explain. But nevertheless, it should not in any way re <clears throat> reduce our enthusiasm and our and our uh, how do you say our positive vision that all the Jews will be gathered together and Mashiach will come. And I'll just tell one small story, another small story. There was a person that <clears throat> he um, he was in the Holocaust and he uh, lost his whole family. And he 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 would he had been religious before. He was young when he was in the Holocaust, but he got out. I guess he went in when he was you know, 13, 14 years old. He got out, he was 17, 18. He, can't, he became a big businessman in California. And of course, he stopped putting on to fill and didn't keep Shabbos, nothing. He was very angry at God. Somehow or other in the middle of the night, he was watching television because he couldn't go to sleep. And he all of a sudden, uh, 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 for bringing from the Rebbe, the Rebbe, Lubavitcher Rebbe was speaking. I thought, who in the world would watch a stupid thing like this? There's no action, it's just an old Jewish guy speaking in Yiddish. What? How did he get any time on the radio on television? Who would? So we watched. All of a sudden, he hears the Rebbe is saying, "Any person that does not put on tefillin because of the Holocaust is giving a reward to to Hitler." And he thought to himself, "Only you know what? I mean, what am I benefiting from this? It's true, you know, Hitler killed all these Jews. We've suffered enough for him from him. Now he's going to kill our souls. No, he's not going to do. I'm going to defy." He went down to Chabad, he talked to them and everything, he started, became religious again. The power of defiance is what has sustained the Jewish people. <clears throat> but even more, the promise that all of this suffering is going to be somehow or other meaningful, I mean, it's impossible, totally impossible to even say a thing like that. But nevertheless, it's true. So, that's what the Rebbe is saying. Don't put your trust in man that's giving all sorts of, how do you say, uh, temporary promises and hopes and things like that. It's going to, don't worry about it. Return to Israel, return to God, and it's going to be infinitely better than you can possibly imagine. Have a good day with Mashiach now. I'll look at these notes that people wrote to me in just a moment. There you go. Stop the share. Stop the this.